Hey there, fun food fans. It's Karen Ricks, head chef here at our kitchen classroom. And I am so excited to have you join me here today on our YouTube channel for World Read Aloud Day. <laughs> We've also just started Black History Month here in February. And so I wanted to be able to share this amazing book with you that I found that is a wonderful celebration of both. The book is called My Hair is a Garden, and it's written and illustrated by Cosby A. Cabrera. My hair is a garden. Are you ready to dive into this beautiful book with me? <laughs> Here we go. Look, inside the front cover, we've got all these amazing, different, beautiful black hairstyles with some styling tools and some garden implements and some beautiful flowers as well. <laughs> My hair is a garden. I was always drawn to Miss Tilly's house. She lived four houses down and across the street from our house. There was something special about Miss Tilly. The way she found a use for everything and made up songs while scrubbing her porch. The way her house shone in the daylight with its vines curling around it, it took my breath away. You could say her house had a glory. Can you see Miss Tilly's house there? It kind of shines in a special way that the others around it don't, doesn't it? I used to run right into her house when I was a toddler. So when I was teased because of my hair, again, it was no surprise that I found myself running right to Miss Tilly's after school. She led me to her kitchen table where she'd been straining sorrel. Its pungent aroma and the smell of steeping ginger filled the kitchen. When my tears came, a slow leak a salty streak. She handed me a tissue and let me be for a few minutes. Miss Tilly knew if I was looking for comfort, I could go to Mama for that. She knew I was at her house for a reason. She set a cup of the sorrel in front of me and I took a sip. It went down smooth and tangy and broke through the lump in my throat. I... I need help with my hair, I said. It wasn't the first time my hair had been made a joke. I sort of got used to it. I'd shrug it off or I'd keep my hat on, even when I wasn't supposed to wear it in class. But when Julio Richards, who I'd known since kindergarten, said, we all know Mac's hair is always a mess. He said it like it was a fact. Like we all know the Statue of Liberty is surrounded by water. Or we all know George Washington was the first president of the United States. Folks have been poking fun of my hair since I was little, I told Miss Tilly. Mama's tried to fix it, but the truth is, she doesn't know what to do with it. I could feel Miss Tilly's hand on my thick nest of a head. That touch gave me hope. I made a little song in my head. 
Miss Tilly's hair is shiny. Miss Tilly's hair is long. She wears it as a crown, like beauty wrapped in song. You know, Miss Tilly's hair has a glory. Miss Tilly called my mama, who said, I could stay there a while. Then, Miss Tilly turned to me. Now, I'll show you how to shampoo, she said. Shampoo? I asked. I know my hair's a mess, but it's not dirty, I thought. Miss Tilly put a towel around my neck and led me to the sink. Normally, I would part your hair in quarters before shampooing, but it's a bit tangled and matted now, so it's best to shampoo first. We'll detangle when it's more pliable. For that, you'll need a wide tooth comb. I already use a wide tooth comb, I said. Well, when I use a comb, that is. Miss Tilly took out a large comb with teeth that looked as far apart as the spaces in a garden rake. I nodded. Oh, right, I said, a wide toothed comb. We'll use this one for now, said Miss Tilly. Later on, when your hair's trained, you can go back to your usual comb. Trained? Did Miss Tilly mean she could train hair? Oh yes, Miss Tilly replied. You've got to work with what you have, but you can still tell it what to do. Do you think my hair will be as long as yours once it's trained? I asked her. Length doesn't matter, Mackenzie. Don't let anybody fool you. It's the health of your hair that counts. Miss Tilly ran the water in the sink. I guess you're right, I said, but I wasn't convinced. Would my hair always be somebody's idea of a joke? Would it ever be beautiful? Miss Tilly turned the water off. Which would you prefer if you had to choose? A healthy, shiny head of cropped hair or hair that's long and straggly and fragile and full of split ends. Which would you choose? Were those my only choices? These questions were drowning out the song in my head. Miss Tilly looked at me as if she were reading my thoughts. She slowly pulled the towel from my shoulder and laid it on the kitchen counter by the sink near the drained pot of sorrel. Come with me, she said, and she steered me toward the screen door to her garden. Miss Tilly's backyard was a paradise with so many shades of green bright pockets of colorful flowers and cool shade. I could barely take it all in. It was as if someone had taken a big paintbrush and made big, bold strokes of green, then used countless little paintbrushes to fill in all the tiny details. We walked over to a bench and sat down. I inhaled deeply. The backyard didn't smell like the rest of the neighborhood. It smelled, well, alive. I wanted to know every part of this garden. I reached down to feel the ground. The earth was damp and cool. It felt like it was giving me something I couldn't see. How did you create this, Miss Tilly? 
I wanted to know. Thirty or more years ago, I put some seeds in the ground, Miss Tilly said. I planted cuttings from neighbors and friends' trees. I bought a few plants and bulbs from catalogs. I pointed to the tree Miss Tilly called a Japanese maple, the big one that draped gracefully over the garden. That tree was a cutting, I asked. Oh, that was a wee thing at first. The phone company men came through the yard one day and trampled over it with their boots. It got in the way when they were sitting to have lunch. I found it plucked up clean and woven into the chain link fence. <gasps> what did you do? I gasped. Oh, I cried a little, Miss Tilly replied paid $15 for that tree, and that was a lot of money for me at the time. But I put that tree right back in the ground, and I watered it every day without fail. I thought about how that little tree had survived, and all the water Miss Tilly gave it every day, even though it just looked like a broken branch. I wondered if I would have given up and thrown it away. I leaned down and ran my hand over some tiny plants on the ground near the bench. What are these? Those are succulents. They hold a lot of water. Makes a great ground cover. They sure are pretty, I said. Miss Tilly looked at me. Is that Japanese maple prettier than those succulents, she asked. Of course not, I said. Even though that Japanese maple's taller, she asked. They're both beautiful, I said, even though they're so different. As the words came out of my mouth, I knew that I believed it. Ah, she said. Go back inside and put your towel back on. That was the first day that I learned my hair is a garden. My hair is a garden. And like every good garden, it must be cared for every day. The nutrients in the soil can be stimulated and enriched. My body is the soil for my hair. What I give to the soil comes back to me. I love to eat right. My words are like seeds that I plant. What I think and what I speak draws a yield. I weed out all opinions that have no place in my garden. Look at these nasty weeds that she's plucking from her garden. It's too curly. Pull it back. Straighten it. Cut it off. Pluck. Pluck. Gotta weed out all those opinions that have no place in the garden. Miss Tilly says, it's not what you start with in the garden that matters. It's the care, time, and attention you give it. My hair is a garden and I give it love. Now that's the end of the story, but this book contains some other tips about caring for black hair, including shampooing and conditioning techniques, sealing in moisture and detangling, protective styling and trimming, and even growing length in black hair. Now, I found this book absolutely fascinating, not only because I never had anything like this as a child, but also because, and you may be wondering, well, why are you reading this book in our kitchen classroom? Well, 
you know what's at the end of this book? Recipes! <laughs> Did you ever think there would be recipes for hair care <laughs> in the back of a children's book? Well, this particular book contains a couple of recipes. And while I'm not going to share these specific ones with you, I think I will just come back and share some recipes and stories that we have been using here in our kitchen classroom over the last decade. So for all of those of you who have been writing to me or sharing your compliments for my naturally curly 4C hair or our little Sue's big pile of ringlets over the years, um, I will share with you some stories of natural hair care and some of the recipes that I have discovered and created and played with in our hair over the years. So I cannot wait to have you come back and join me in our next video here as we share some delicious and celebratory recipes here for black hair care here in Black History Month. I hope that you enjoyed My Hair is a Garden just as much as I have. I will see you in our next video. <laughs>